Yesterday I found out about this automatic alignment plugin, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. And I will explain my concerns and test out the plugin today. My very, very first video on this YouTube channel, which is a bit nostalgic to me already, was about mono compatibility and face alignment. And I demoed how flipping the face, or which I now know, reversing the polarity, can make a huge difference in the mono sound of your track. And this time we're talking about the same trick but in a different way with multiple audio signals, most of the times microphone signals, that are aligned together. And this can be done by reversing the polarity or by time adjusting the signal, so delaying it. And that is what has got my concerns. Let me explain this in a different place. Okay, so I made the most simple drum setup you can think of. I've got a overhead microphone over here, I've got a snare microphone over here and a kick microphone which is out of frame. Well, first let's look at the overhead and the snare. What I need to do, the sound arrives first at the snare microphone and a little bit later in the overhead microphone because sound travels with 340 meters per second. So this distance is about a meter. So you can calculate how much delay there is between the sound in the direct microphone and in the overhead microphone. This isn't rocket science. And if I want to time align these both microphones, I need to delay the direct microphone because I cannot put this one to a future setting, like having a playback sound that it have so, so, so let's get in the Turk microphone, the microphone at the kick. And let's still keep that snare as a reference. So there's also a distance between the snare microphone and the kick microphone. And I can also compensate that with delaying. So we have the longest delay on the snare microphone, then the kick, and then uh, this one will be the direct signal. I hope you're still following me. But now comes the problem. We've got everything aligned on the snare drum. But what if I play a kick drum? then we want everything to be aligned on the kick drum. And we need different delay settings because then the kick drum is the first one in line and the delays are coming in from the snare and the overhead microphone. There are a lot of companies and a lot of people that try to innovate audio, but you cannot innovate physics. And this is, the, this is just a physics problem. But still, I wanna see what the auto align from Radix does with it because it's physically impossible so I'm going to record a few snares and a few kicks. Okay, so I've got the recordings over here. I uh, gained up the kick a bit so we can see what we're on about. So I played the snare over here and you can see that the initial impact comes in on the snare microphone. Then a bit later, it comes in on the kick microphone and still a bit later from that, it gets in at the overhead microphone. So exactly as expected, and that's because of the nature of sound. What this plugin is going to do, it looks at the polarity and it looks at the delay time. So, so the time alignment of both signals. I think what it will do is, or it will just flip the polarity because uh, you can clearly see what's going on here. It's out of phase, uh, but it can also time align it a little bit further to the start like that but that's something i want to see what he what it is going to do so let's insert it on both channels it's pretty st straightforward how it works so what we need to do is press the detect button and press play i don't know what it has done right now but it says over here that it's delaying it by 133 samples and it's delaying backwards which is logical because it's the overhead. It has to be delayed backwards, so to the left. or to the, yeah. And the plugin, of course, can do it because it can look forward into the audio. So what I want to do right now is play the snare with and without the delay compensation and see what sounds better. I don't know. Okay, so that's with. And that's without. What I was expecting is a bit more low end, a bit more punch in the snare. And that is, that is completely logical because right now the two signals are lined up together. As I said, a drum kit doesn't have two signals. It's more than two signals and it's, it's a more complex 
microphone setup. So let's also align the kick on that snare signal. So we will have everything aligned on the snare, right? Let's press the detect button because right now things will get complicated. I hope you're still following me. So it's got itself aligned right now on the snare also and it says it's 48 samples which is equivalent of 34 centimeters which could be yeah could be it i'm not sure if it's still aligned no it, it, it can be aligned with the can it can be aligned with the overhead right or is it and now it's thinner so and now you can hear, I, I hope you can hear it through the YouTube compression, otherwise uh, get some good headphones or big speakers uh, and listen to the low end. Without and with. It sounds thinner and that's logical. And that's because the overhead, which now is aligned to the snare, isn't aligned anymore to the kick. And the kick is also aligned to the snare, so, so it's one big mess, one big face mess right now. And that's the danger of these type of plugins. You know, when recording drums, take some time to place the microphones and listen to what colors nicely together. Because the phase correlation between all those microphones is what makes the drum sound so amazing. And if you want to correct it in a professor type of way, you are actually taking away all the emotion and all the uniqueness of the sound and even the fatness. So, so that's the danger of these type of plugins. And I know what these plugins are for. Let's say for instance a guitar amplifier. This is a memory stick which failed in my MacBook. This is another one. But right now this is a guitar amplifier. And we've got a microphone directly on the guitar amplifier. And we got another microphone a bit farther away like that. So I hope oh, so so both tips of the pens are microphones. And then we also got a, a, a time alignment problem between these to microphones. And for that, such a plugin could be handy, but, but let's be honest, it's sold for $149, which is a bit expensive for something you can also do by hand and something we all wanna do by hand. Because me personally, there can go so much wrong with such a detection that, that I'm still going to check it. You know, I'm going to listen to it and check if it did it all right. I think that will take more time than just looking at it and adjusting the waveforms and testing it a few times to, to align it together in such a situation uh, as with that guitar amplifier. I don't know why everybody is such freaking out about uh, time alignment between different signals. I know that it's really important in a stereo signal, most of the time the polarity of the signal is really important. This is just the wrong kind of, of rocket science. If you want to do rocket science, go and work for SpaceX or something. Th that's the, where the real rocket science is, not in audio engineering. So that's it for this video. It was also an experiment for me because uh, I heard multiple people talking about phase alignment and all that bullshit things that I already knew weren't possible. And me personally, I really like that I debunked that myth just for myself, just so I know that I'm doing things the best I could. If you like this video and want to see more of these videos, consider supporting me by becoming a patron. You can do this on a special website called patreon.com. I've got it linked over here. And if you want to see more of me, I've got also some more videos of me over here. So check them out. I want to thank you for your time and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and bye bye.